What's good you guys and welcome back to the channel. And today we have friend to the show, psychologist Cherish Herd back. And let me put you up to speed actually Cherish. The last couple episodes have been self love related. I talked about my self love journey from weighing 440 pounds to 220. And then last week I dropped a skincare routine. Um, just trying to build self love so that way people go into the new year as confident to achieve whatever personal goals that oh, they yeah. have. Oh, yeah. So I figured I'd bring you on for the finale and you can give the people some self love tips that hopefully sure. will help your life, increase your life, and get you into the new year feeling good about yeah. yourself. I love how you just said that like I haven't been watching. I've been watching. <laughs> what other podcasts are we going to watch? No, None. of course. That's the best. The best of the best new life. So love that. Up to speed. Love that. And so without further ado, let's get into it. All right, Cheris. So let's say we have someone where I was a couple years ago, very low self-love, self-confidence. What would you say is the first beginning steps to take your journey to self-love? Something I always tell people to start out with is knowing yourself, mm -hmm. knowing who you are, knowing what you like because how can you have self-care if you don't know what self-care looks like to you mm -hmm. right because my self-care is going to be different from your self-care right mm -hmm. different from anyone's self-care so um you are uniquely you and mm -hmm. that is a clear message that needs to be really just emanated from you having that confidence starts from knowing yourself because then there's no more question mm -hmm. right you know who you are you know what you like. Mm -hmm. and so you're able to operate and act towards those steps. So getting your ideal self, if you have to, writing it on paper of your ideal self, who you want to be, mm -hmm. and then aspiring towards that like you would any other goal. Mm -hmm. When you're saying aspiring towards that, I definitely think that you have to take action towards what you want to like for example i wasn't loving what i seen in the mirror so having to take that action to fall like back in love with yourself is very important like exercise working out and or whatever that insecurity for someone could be whether that be your acne your self-confidence anything like that so how important is like that taking those action steps and not just living in that victim mindset it is so important. Equally important is that self-care um, and self-love in the sense of where is your mindset? Is it negative towards yourself during this process? Because if you're not giving yourself grace, is it helpful? If it's helpful, I mean, you can roll with it as you, you know, but if usually typically it's not helpful when we're saying negative things about ourselves or thinking those negative things about ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that's why it can be important to have those positive affirmations or positive self-talk, positive statements about yourself that you truly believe or that you are aspiring to believe. That's like unique to you. Again, that unique piece is really shining through because uh, mm -hmm. if I just say like, oh, I'm smart. That can mean something to one person, but for another person, that could not be important to them being smart. They're like, yeah, I'm smart. My whole family's smart. I don't really care. Um, but something different might be important to them. Like, I know who I am. Mm -hmm. That's another statement that could be, that can emanate that confidence. You understand what I'm meaning? Yeah. So starting mindset and behavior and emotions are all interconnected. Mm -hmm. So anywhere you decide to start, that's going to already start pushing you in the right direction of self-care and self-love. Mm -hmm. So starting with behavior, if you decide to start there, you're aspiring towards, like you said, reduced acne or a certain weight or what have you. Having that grace of this is where I am and I'm still an amazing, important person who is able to really bring special things to the table that no one else can bring, special thoughts, special reasoning, special questions. You know, you are unique and you are special. Getting that base groundwork because you should only be exploring who you are for so long, right? Because mm -hmm. then it can be unstable. Mm -hmm. So it, there is a time frame where, you know, you're exploring yourself, you're seeing what you like, what you love. And I'm not saying to not, ever continue evolving yeah like yeah that's important for us to continue to evolve to be better that's what we're created to do right yeah but what i'm saying is having at least that foundation of yourself of who you are 
having that stable to be able to go back to whenever you're faced with like these opposing views of oh the media says if I'm not in shape that I'm not anything the media says that if I'm not um, aspiring towards this huge job with lots of money that I'm not anything being able to combat that like mm-hmm. no I am a confident person no I am a person who has an intelligence I am a person who is bringing to the table a unique viewpoint I am a person you know these are these positive affirmations and it can start small I am who I am. If you just want to start there because you don't like yourself, mm-hmm. you know, you can start small just so that you're able to work towards that foundation of who you are. Then you're able, right, mm-hmm. to approach and work towards the ideal self that you're wanting. Mm-hmm. So, all right, yeah, since I am this incredible person, I can do anything. That anything starting with, I'm going to start taking steps towards losing weight or towards reducing my acne. I'm going to go to the dermatologist. I'm going to actually take that step towards saving up money to be able to go to the dermat. Whatever your situation Mm -hmm. is, it can start with that mindset paired with those behaviors. Mm -hmm. But I still feel like that mindset of knowing who you are, having that foundation is such an important piece. I agree with that. But I have a question. What do you think the difference is between self-love? Because I feel like in society, we're taught if we like do self-love and self-care and stuff it's almost selfish to like care for yourself what would you say is different between self-love and like narcissism and selfishness i would definitely say take your own journey on that because sometimes we have this pendulum right and because we're so not taking care of ourselves that the pendulum sometimes has to swing all the way in the opposite direction where you're being completely selfish and then as it's going back and forth you kind of find this balance and as close as you can get to the middle is what you want so that's definitely a own personal journey type thing um there are mixed messages out there right Mm -hmm. um if you are taking care of yourself you it ranges from very levels varying levels as to what that means but it could be like perceived as selfish or Mm -hmm. if you are you know overly taking care of other people and your health is going down that's a good indicator that you're going to need to be a little bit more selfish and take care of yourself. Um, This, especially with the holidays, can get really blended um, because you're supposed to be around your family and sometimes your family's not so helpful to you. If you're finding that you're around a lot of people who are draining you when you leave, you're feeling worse about yourself. They're not really giving you uplifting words, uplifting things to talk about, um, then that could be a good indicator that you may need to spend less time or just say a quick hello for the holidays or not even see them at all. Um, Just distancing yourself. And when I say distancing, not isolating. Definitely find a group of people that you do feel like you're able to express yourself in, that you're able to um, have self-care without that condemnation of you are taking care of yourself and that is wrong for sure sure but that can just really be mentally unhealthy forcing yourself in these environments that aren't good for your mental health right Mm -hmm. um and that can be perceived as being selfish you are not coming right it's Mm -hmm. gonna happen um unfortunately learning the word no exactly so true and so going back to your original question um it's a self journey but also If you're finding self-care is action and it's work, okay? So if you're finding that you're not able to incorporate this time of work that you're doing for yourself, then that's a good indicator that you might need to move back in other areas. So it depends, again, all on your values. So discover what your value, that's what that ideal self is. Discover what your values are. If your value is making money, if your value is you know, making sure you're in shape. If your value is making sure you have a daily routine, all of which can be helpful. I'm just saying, depending on what your highest value is, that's what you want to aspire towards. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for example, for me, something that is really important for me is family, um, making sure that I have time to rest, making sure that I'm taking care of all of my work duties, as well as having some time with friends, making sure that my prayer life, because I am a Christian, so making sure my prayer life is up to par. So what that means for me, I have my schedule set out. Okay, I have to wake up earlier in the morning than usual to have my prayer time, because that is so important for my mental health to be able to 
dish out on god everything that's happening and <laughs> what my exactly. experiences are so that's like really important for my mental health I, I need to do that morning and night like that is my thing for me that i need to do mm-hmm. um and then being able to go to work that's important for my mental health for me to have money to have my job so if family or friends are saying like i need you to come away from the work and i'm not saying rare occurrences like there's an emergency or something like that we all have to you know move and and ebb and weave with whatever's going on i'm talking about like regular occurrences where it's hindering you from your job is no longer working out or someone's asking for money constantly all of these things can at first be okay but then when you see your your own health's going down you're not able to concentrate at work on your job so there's always going to be these telltale signs the key is recognizing them for yourself which isn't always possible right Mm -hmm. so that's why it's important to have at least two confidants um two is really hard to find one if you can find one would be really great Mm -hmm. if you can find two you're phenomenal you have solved all life's problems you're Mm -hmm. amazing um but if you can find one confidant and this isn't just like a friend or a parent it's someone that you've seen follow you for at least five years who has only encouraged you and wanted what was best for you like even when they're saying like you're being ridiculous or what have you you see that the outcome was for your benefit in the long run whenever you reflect back someone like that who is able to recognize and be like you need to rest you need to say no oh that one remember that's the fifth time this has happened you know someone mm-hmm. who can remind you when you're feeling all of this pressure feeling loaded feeling weighted um that's super important to have Mm-hmm. And to your point earlier about setting a, a schedule and a routine, I think that's very important for uh, self-love. For me, I have to get my workouts in because I feel best about myself when I feel my muscles hard and I feel like I am on like continuing my weight loss and keeping off my mm-hmm. weight loss. Like I feel good about myself and then my whole mental space is better. Mm-hmm. And I feel good when I pray and I'm have my good relationship with God mm-hmm. and then feel good when I'm working and like feeling like I'm elevating in my life. Yeah. So those are things that are non-negotiables. If I can't get my workouts in, if I can't keep my relationship with God and if I can't keep evolving in my career, um, that affects my mental psyche and affects my, uh, self-love not to say that my worth comes from working out and from work but it's it it makes me feel like i'm taking care of myself which is important exactly because you're aware of your values you're aware Mm -hmm. of what is important to you what helps you you know yourself and that's stable and consistent and i know there's this new rhetoric going of like we're not unique we're all the same and like believe it or not because of societal structures you're not really unique you're doing whatever we're told to do But then it's contradicted with like, you have your own unique experience of what has happened to you that I can never Mm. relate to. And so um, try and you can try and explain whenever you're ready. You know, we have these contrasting viewpoints from science. Mm -hmm. Um, And so yet we're saying if you think a certain way, that's going to affect how you behave. So if your experience is unique, that's going to impact how you're thinking. You're going to have a unique way of thinking. No, it's not all society. Like you have a unique way of thinking and then that's going to portray uniquely in your behaviors. You gave us so many tips. Is there any last few key points that you feel like are gems for achieving self-love? Yeah. Even though it's a forever journey, but. Yeah, I having that groundwork of like trust, mm-hmm. trusting God, trusting yourself, trusting your gut feelings take a day or so to see where you're at in comparison to where you want to be and just really sit in it and sometimes that evokes some negative emotions and that's okay and you can sit in that for a little bit of time instead of pushing that away okay really knowing what those emotions are like so that when when you encounter them you're able to combat them in the future if you need to Um, You're able to be comfortable with who you are in the moment and so it's just so important to know yourself really be one with yourself right we hear this all the time being one with yourself so that you can promote yourself if that makes sense so that's another thing that is so important and that's what i want to leave you with is that we're the ones that mess it up right so have at least one thing 
each day that you look forward to. I don't care if it's just a hot bath, if you're looking forward to like really taking time to wash your face and like massage it in. I don't care what it is. Having a hot tea. It can be something so simplistic. doesn't have to be extravagant. But one thing, five minutes that you look forward to doing for yourself that you ensure that you do each day and do it. That's self-care. That's self-love. I agree with that. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming on today again, you're Cherish. You're so welcome. And thank guys, you if you look, you're welcome. And if you guys like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Give two, one for me, one for Cherish. Subscribe to the channel because we got more videos coming up. And don't forget to follow Cherish at her Instagram. And we will see you next week.